This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about Game Theory 101 for Bitcoin Core Devs. And this is part of an ongoing series that provides remedial education for Bitcoin Core Devs who may have risen too quickly in the organization and thus may find themselves lacking an understanding of the very basics. This is part of the series that includes Risk Analysis 101 for Bitcoin Core Devs. Now, many Bitcoin Core Devs were in high school just a few years ago, so I think it's important to bring them up to speed on things like game theory. Game theory involves things like thinking more than one move ahead. It's a lot like a game that's called chess. For example, let's say that you're a Bitcoin Core Dev and you want more mempool consistency, where everyone's mempools look mostly the same, and those mempools mostly conform to what most mining pools are including in blocks. This is, of course, delusional and has never been how Bitcoin has functioned over the years, and it's a great example of the evils of central planning. But let's just say that this is actually Bitcoin Core's goal because it is. So Core comes out with new software that better aligns mempools with what gets mined. Mission accomplished? No, not quite, because it turns out that Bitcoiners really don't like it when you try to change Bitcoin, even if you just try to change mempool policy. So lots of people, quite unsurprisingly, if you understand game theory, hate the new software. Lots of new, lots of people hate the new software, as well as Core's bad attitude. So they start running an alternate implementation, like Bitcoin Knots, which enforces filters, like the inscriptions filter, for example, as well as smaller op returns. Congratulations, Bitcoin Core devs have now made 21% of the mempools on the network diverge even more from other mempools as well as from what's getting mined by pools. And if they hadn't left their game theory textbooks in their mom's cars when they were dropped off at chain code, this might never have happened. Here's some more second order thinking that core devs might find helpful. Mempool filters are not just about filtering out spam. They're also about sending a signal to bad actors about what Bitcoiners are willing to tolerate and what they're willing to fight even if it's a consensus valid transaction. Bitcoin Core devs in 2014 understood this well, and it was their hostility to non-monetary data on Bitcoin that ended up driving away people like Vitalik Buterin, who writes here on November 12th, 2017, the very earliest versions of the ETH protocol were a counterparty style Metacoin on top of Primecoin, not Bitcoin because the op return wars were happening at the time. And given what certain core devs were saying at the time, I was scared that protocol rules would change under me, for example, by banning certain ways to encode data and transactions to make it harder. And I did not want to build on a base protocol whose dev team would be at war with me. It's very good to be at war with scammers and spammers. And we were fortunately able to drive away Vitalik from Bitcoin. This is the stance, though, that Bitcoin Core devs should be taking today and showing more hostility to spam. In terms of game theory, Nick Zabo is definitely someone who gets it. As he writes here, whether you try to discourage something or do nothing or try to encourage it or seem to do these things, each of these actions or non-actions sends a signal, often a much more powerful signal than the actual security of your effort warrants. Think about locks on your door. Would they stop a skilled and determined robber? No. Do they stop most unwanted visitors? Yes. Most predators just want dinner and they will choose the least risky prey they can find. Since this debate, talking about the opportune debate, since this debate mostly lies in the area of the mempool and relay policy, it mostly isn't about strong security. It's more about the locked door kind of security, or even just about traffic signs that guide people to the proper place. A strong security solution would obviously be much better, but the alternative to a strong security solution is not to do nothing. It is to fall back on other methods, methods that may be weak, but that send a signal like mempool filters. The fact that you can't stop a determined and skilled attacker in this case should not stop us from trying to stop most of the behavior that could harm node operators individually or the network collectively. And then I really like this post as well from Sat Scholar pointing out that Bitcoin did not succeed because of code. It succeeded because of design. Satoshi was not a great programmer. His C++ was clunky and criticized, but that never mattered. The genius was in the incentive structures that keep the system in balance, miners securing for rewards, users verifying for self-interest, developers constrained by social consensus. The game theory Again, we're back to that topic. The game theory is what makes Bitcoin work, not the elegance of the code. What's overlooked, what's overlooked is that most changes today are argued by people who can write code like Bitcoin core devs. But Bitcoin's real oversight has always come from outside of that circle. Economists, philosophers, and everyday users. Satoshi himself belonged more to this other group. He was a systems thinker. 
He was a systems thinker who used code as a tool, not as the essence of Bitcoin. At its core, Bitcoin is not software. It's a social contract expressed through rules. The code simply enforces the design. I think that's a great post. And in conclusion, I would agree, Bitcoin needs fewer devs and more systems thinkers, more big thinkers, fewer tinkerers and innovators, and more conservators. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.